All right, welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be touching upon the confidentiality, integrity, and availability triad in InfoSec. And I'll sort of explain uh, these five uh, essential security features that are used in InfoSec. So first of all, let me just give you a basic understanding if you're not already familiar. InfoSec, the whole idea behind InfoSec is pretty self-explanatory. It's the process of keeping information secure, uh, maintaining its integrity, making sure it's available. And that's why we all uh, it all comes down to or points towards this CIA triad. Now, this is something I've already explained before on the channel, but I'll go over it one more time and its relation to data and uh, you know penetration testing. So it's very essential to understand what you're dealing with. So the CIA triad is an integral part of InfoSec. That's pretty much clear. And it involves the use of five essential features, more like security features, uh, to ensure that data is kept secure. Now, that's a very vague statement, and that's why it is defined very clearly, as we can see in this triad. So the, the three we're dealing with primarily are going to be confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And they may seem self-explanatory, but let me give you an introduction into them, right? So number one, confidentiality. This is very important. So this feature or security feature ensures that data is accessible to only those that have authorized access. So for example, uh, we can encrypt data to prevent unauthorized access. And of course, only the authorized parties with the decryption keys can access that data. So this prevents uh, you know, attackers or anyone, any insider from accessing data that they are not, uh, you know, that they're not authorized to access. So that's one, that's very important. Number two, we have integrity, right? So integrity, uh, this is used to ensure that the integrity of the data is maintained and that no unauthorized changes have been made to the data. So what, what, what do I mean by this? So if you have a, a piece of data or a file and you want to make sure that you maintain its integrity across the board, you can, uh, you, you can use things like MD5 signature hashing or checksums that will uh, will actually generate a hash of a particular file or a folder and uh, that hash is unique to that particular file so if any changes are made uh, that will generate a different hash and from that you can perform or you can use deductive logic to determine that hey uh, there has been a change made to this file and none of us or none of the authorized parties have actually done this so there has to be some uh, that there has to be a breach of uh, integrity here or security uh, in, in, in a whole so the next step is, or the next security feature, is availability, right? So availability uh, ensures that systems that store and process this data are accessible to authorized users when needed. So a quick example of this is, you know, things like DDoS protection, uh, load balancing uh, to, to a light extent. But uh, what, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that the data that is required by certain authorized individuals is available to them when they're required. Now, this could also be your clients uh, and you know you, you could be running a website for example or a web application that's very popular and uh, you know clients require access to this web application to either you know perform transactions do various types of things and so you want to ensure that they can access the data when they require it all right now the two uh, that are going to be authenticity and non-repudiation really fall under the cia triad but are also very important Right. So authenticity is used to ensure that the authenticity of the communication or the transfer of data uh, is genuine. So an example of this is you're ensuring that communication is encrypted, either using um, uh, either using, uh, you know, encrypted communication like HTTPS or SSL or TLS. Uh, you're essentially making sure that this data has not been intercepted and modified in transit. That's one example. Uh, secondly, is you're trying to ensure that the data uh, is uh, as you're, you're trying to ensure that data is not being modified or is uh, not being changed in any way by unauthorized parties. Now, you may be saying, well, doesn't this tie into integrity? Well, let me explain. So, for example, you could have a system where you have a, uh, you know, you have three authorized users that have access to a data set or a database. And then uh, through some security breach, an attacker gets access to a particular account uh, and again they can then start performing changes as that authorized user so this is an obvious breach to prevent this you want to have things like two-factor authentication that you know try and verify the identity of the person or you're trying to generally speaking ident uh, to authenticate and you're trying to make sure 
that the person is who they say they are. And of course, this could also use things like biometrics, stuff like that. And as I said, when talking about, uh, you know, uh, the authenticity of data within transit, you're talking about things like SSL, TLS, etc. All right. And finally, we have non-repudiation. So non-repudiation is a very simple thing to understand. You're essentially trying to ensure that communication, uh, communication between a sender and a recipient cannot be refuted. So a quick example, if you're in an organization, uh, you want to essentially log communication and I'll get into that later on, but that, that may seem very vague. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to ensure that if someone sends an email or communicates to, uh, to someone within the company outside, you are able to to actually uh, to actually prove that they did that. So you 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 have the ability to say, hey, you know, you, even if they refute it or they try and say, hey, I didn't send that, you have the proof uh, and you can actually prove that they did this. Now, this, as you can see, all ties very closely with each other because if you miss one of these, then the rest of these can all fall down. So, for example, if you miss authenticity and you don't have things like 2FA to verify the identity of authorized users, then non-repudiation can fail because if the person or the authorized user didn't do it and an attacker did it from his account, uh, then it really can be blamed on him. So they all have to build on one another and that's why uh, they all settle on a triad. So the whole idea behind a tri uh, triangle is they all need each other to actually form a solid structure. All right, so that is the CIA triad uh, within InfoSec and this is why it's very important. So this will all come into play as we start penetration testing. You'll actually see that uh, you're, you're actually trying to target uh, all of these areas uh, at different levels. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comment section or at our website at hackersploit.org and we'll happily answer you or fix any issues we have with this particular video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video.